Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Books with Rachel Ayo. Today I'm going to be reviewing this book right here. It's Sepi Atta's Everything Good Will Come. I'm so excited to finally be reviewing this book. <laughs> you can tell that I'm excited. I don't know why I just stumbled on it because I know that it's been out for donkey years. Everybody says it's a classic, so I can't wait to actually share what I thought of the book. I read this book in one sitting, literally in one sitting. I was in court for the whole day from like 9 to 5.30. I read 75% of it on that day. I was able to zone out all the as the court pleases, my lord be pleased and all of those things that go down the court, which coincidentally, there's quite a number of that that goes on in this book because the main character is a lawyer as well. So let's get started. Sefi Atta is a Nigerian author, playwright and screenwriter. She has published different works which have earned her amazing awards and she's a very notable writer in Nigeria. I read one of her books called Swallow and I loved it. I think that was the first time I've fallen in love with Sefi Atta's writing. It's 1971 and Nigeria is under military rule, though the politics of the state matter less than those of her home to any Tom Taiwo. An 11 year old girl tired of waiting for school to start. Will her mother, who has become deeply religious since the death of any Tom's brother, allow her friendship with the new girl next door, Sherry Bakari? This novel charts the fate of these two Nigerian girls, one who is prepared to manipulate the traditional system and one who attempts to defy it. The book is about a young girl, Eniton Taiwo. It follows her journey through life from the time she's 11 to when she's like 35 or to into her 40s. The lessons she's learned, her transformation, her evolution, the challenges that she comes across in life, her friendships, her relationships, parental affiliations and influences. The book starts out in 1971. She's 11. She meets a girl. Her name is Sherry Bakare. She lives next door. They become friends. As time progresses, she gets older. She's introduced to new things that she had never been introduced to, such as sex, her period, her body changes. She goes to boarding house. She makes a lot of friends. She still maintains her friendship with Sherry Bakari. Then she gets older. She meets boys. She has crushes. You know, things that girls that are younger and in their teenage years would definitely experience. And then she gets older. She goes to the UK for a while. She works there. For a little while then she decides to come home because she's tired of that place it's lonely for her and then she does her nyse she gets called to buy in nigeria she's a lawyer like me and then she works for her dad for a bit she gets older she has a relationship then she eventually gets married and has a baby girl towards the end of the book a lot of things happen which i'm not going to give any spoilers about but i'm sure a lot of people have already read this book because i'm here 15 years later, literally. She's basically exposed to the Nigerian educational system, the politics, governance and power in Nigeria, and the structures that were in place at that particular time because Nigeria experienced some military rule, then some civilian rule, then back to military rule. There were a lot of coups and coup attempts. And so this book is basically a fly on the wall sort of expose into Nigeria, Lagos in particular at that time when there were a lot of changes in the political structure of the country and how that affected the lives of the average Nigerian. The book is set in Lagos, Nigeria and then some parts are set in England but majority of the book is set in Lagos, Nigeria in 1971, 1985 and 1995. So it spans 20 years and you're just exposed to lagos nigeria in those times i have some sentimental attachment to lagos because lagos will always have my heart i was born there i was i grew up there and you know i spent most of my life in lagos so it was just nice to see how some of the places that the author described in her book also brought to life my own personal experiences in lagos like in lagos island and in the marina and in other places that you know my family and i have lived I loved how Sefi Atta was able to expose any reader of this book to Lagos 
at the particular time that you were reading so 1971 lagos nigeria how did they look 1985 1995 it was so intriguing to me because oh and it was nerve-wracking as well because a lot of things have still not changed my goodness there was no power we were still battling electricity there was corruption in government there was just so much going on at that time and it's just so crazy how we're still in the same situations that we were in nigeria and I guess it was interesting because I'm a fan of history, especially Nigerian history, and I just love seeing the interplay between politics, governance, political systems, as well as how it affected the average Nigerian. So I learned a lot actually that I didn't even know about Nigeria in these times, and it was just good to see that it came from a Lagos perspective. Okay, so the writing style of this book, yeah, I loved it so much. I loved it because look so she wrote in first person narrative right and she was basically giving us an expose into anyton's world into anyton's life her way of thinking her way of living everything but it starts when she's 11 and it's so crazy how this author could write like an 11 year old well i guess that's her gift of writing that's why Sefiata is just second to none because she wrote like an 11 year old like as i was reading the book i felt like i was 11 all over again the Things that now, because I'm older, I would consider petty or I would consider, oh my goodness, get over it, like it's not the end of the world. For an 11 year old at that point, making friends, asking somebody, will you be my best friend? No one is like, no or yes or whatever. And <laughs> it just brought back so many memories. It was just too real. In my mind, I was thinking, was it wasn't an 11 year old that wrote this part? Because even the use of language, she obviously could not use heavy language or language that you have to grab a dictionary because an 11 year old. Well, I mean, well, some 11 year olds can understand those things, but an 11 year old would typically write in simple, plain English and would typically be thinking about the most simple things ever. So I loved how she was able to do that because it's different when I know that the character is 11 years old, but I'm still reading it like I'm a 20 something year old. But then when I know that the character is 11 and I and I begin to feel like I'm 11 just because I'm reading that part of the book, then that's that's something else and I appreciated that fact. So even as the main protagonist got older, you could tell that the character was growing the use of English was now more mature, it was more pronounced. You could tell that this was somebody that had experienced life. I love how she just made things so real. I think another interesting thing that I loved about Sefi Atta's writing style was the fact that there was no chapters in the book. Like, literally, there were no chapters in the book. The book was just divided into three parts, I think. 71, 85, and 95. This book was a really long prose fiction book and I was just wondering I'm like wait I think I had gotten to half of the book or maybe 85 percent of the book and then I looked I'm like wait how come there's no chapter or have I just been reading and I didn't know what chapter I'm on now and it just goes to show that yeah chapterization is key in some writing but at the end of the day if you're able to deliver a powerful message whether it's in fiction or non-fiction your readers will be hooked if you have an amazing writing style they'll be hooked regardless of whether you have chapter one or chapter 20 but she wrote in the one person narrative from the beginning to the end just dividing the book by different time frames without any chapters i was blown away honestly because it grabbed my attention all through Let's talk about her use of imagery. I mean, obviously, I, I've said earlier, this one, I'm not even going to spend time on it. This was amazing use of imagery. She brought to life Lagos that I've not even experienced because I was not born in the 70s or in the 80s. And it was just so interesting to see because it was from her words, it was easy to just conjure up all these images of what Lagos looked like. And unfortunately, like I said, some of these things still affect us till now. I noted that while I was reading the book, there were certain themes that I saw. The theme of time, it was just too real. The way she was able to show someone at 11, at 16 in boarding house, at 20 something, when she was a hothead with her boyfriend. Oh, wait, there's one juicy gist I have to give in the book. 
Anita had this boyfriend who she really, you know, was into and her boyfriend was into her and stuff like that. And then, um, so she, she had come back to Nigeria and she was working as a lawyer in her dad's law firm. This guy and her have been going steady for a while. Then she gets into an argument with her dad and she's really mad and she's yelling at her dad, oh, in fact, I'm leaving the office. And then her dad goes, where are you going to? I think it's like in the middle of the day or something like that. And then she gets into her car, she drives to his house. And then when she gets to his gate, she knocks on the door, he comes out, and then he's like looking a little bit um, guilty. You mean it. He's like, oh, I, I didn't know you were coming. And then she's, she goes, eh, imagine my dad did this. She's trying to tell him what happened and what pissed her off. And then he's like, oh, he says again, I didn't know you were coming. Anyway, then he lo she looks at him and she's like, what's wrong with this one? Anyway, she now stumps up to his <laughs> apartment only for her to get up there and then see some other babe lying down on the ground on bed acting like she owns the place or whatever and then she looked at him and she's like really anyway she's really really mad so she stomps back down the stairs goes into her car but then she's about to leave then she remembers and she's like hmm, no this man must suffer then she goes back upstairs and then she grabs an artwork because the guy she was dating at the time was an artist then she grabs his artwork and then she smashes it and destroys it <laughs> and she knew that he had been working on it for like eight months because i think it was some mosaic piece that had beads in it and he had to put each bead one after the other and then she smashes it, and then she destroys it, and then he looks at her and he goes not my work and then she looks at him and she goes not my life and i was like hey <laughs> Okay, I was a little bit too excited at that part, honestly, but yeah, I was in court when I actually read that. So just imagine me in court, um, sitting, waiting for my matter to be called, and then I read that part, and then I looked around, I was like, yes! So it was so nice to see how the author was able to, you know, interplay all these experiences that she had. It just goes to show that when you're 11, when you're 16, when you're 25, time would always be a major factor. Time is going as we know it. We're getting older. The things that matter to us at when we're 11 can, cannot matter to us when we're 25. Now that really matter when we're 35. When she became a mom and she became a wife, she had other people to care about other than herself. Her priorities were different. Things changed. As she got older, she was able to understand why the average woman you know was made to cook and clean and be all stay in the kitchen while you're having an occasion and she really felt opposed to that she was like no i don't want my life to be this way i don't want to have to end up like this one and she kept on having so many questions about the government about why you know things were happening the way they were happening in nigeria at that time well, how come things aren't getting better what's going on why is there corruption you know why is it that journalists or people can't speak out against the government without getting carried away or detained or imprisoned but it just showed how time plays a major factor in the life of anybody your priorities change things change, they either get better or they don't, or you're always trying to make things better. And Sefi Atta did an amazing job in just showing us the role of time in this book and in life generally. There was also a strong theme of feminism in this book, which honestly, I loved. And I loved the fact that it wasn't, oh, a group of women, because they always say, oh, women at worst are always angry and everybody's always talking feminism stuff. But this one, it was Anita's dad who used to ask her uh -uh. so are you not going to you know go and read or are you not going to school? make sure you go to school make sure you focus on your books become a good lawyer and as a young girl you know hearing her mom who of course had different views on that and her mom was always like no you need to do this this is what a girl must do this is a girl should sit well a girl should do this a girl should you know be in the kitchen cooking cleaning and her dad who was the one telling her oh focus on your books and all of that do you just want to end up in life as one of those housewives who don't do anything and that's not to say that being a housewife is not doing anything but the encouragement to be more especially in an african setting and in an african tradition other than a woman who cooks and clean and who belongs to the kitchen came from her dad and it was just so amazing to see because her dad really believed in the education of girls her dad believed that women could actually be more than what the african setting and society 
tags them to be all the encouragement that she had gotten from her dad you could now see it when she had gotten older she was very very vocal she was expressive she was strong-willed she was not about to be anybody's uh, sheep or whatever you know so she could say her mind she had a mind of her own she had a lot of questions about the government about political systems about democracy and she would ask those questions she found the right places to express herself from growing up and the fact that her father had instilled in her that there is so much more that you can do don't listen to oh yes your life ends and begins in the kitchen and even if you've achieved every other thing but maybe you can't cook or fry plantain then you're a failure in life or you don't have a child then you're a failure and it went with her all through life you know and she was able to express herself she was able to especially in her relationships and in her marriage even if i must say that <laughs> she was very very stubborn honestly because there were so many times when i'm like no wow anything calm down like it's, it's not that serious you know but she the fact that she had a voice and she knew that she could use it and she knew that she was more than what people had been told because a lot of other women around her had just been like mm, that's it now my dear that's the way women are supposed to ah, that's the way we are all supposed to be but she kept on going no that we're more than that like there's so much more that we can offer and i loved how the the author was able to effortlessly convey the theme of feminism so let's talk about the ending of this book i was mightily surprised at the ending of this book because i was just wondering i'm like from where and the way you know the book did not have chapters right so the author could just sneak in one bomb in one paragraph that is mixed into something and just like wait what like what's going on here i don't really know if it was so necessary so if you have not read this book if you're like me that has not read this book even if it's been out for like hundreds of years please go and read it i really 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 liked it one of my favorite reads already this year it's that book that you'd want to read if you want to read a nigerian piece of literary fiction i would definitely recommend this book sefi Atta did an amazing job and i know i say this over and over and over again but this is one of the best books <laughs> that i've ever read i'm serious this time i promise so what is my verdict for this book a strong 9.7 over 10. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching my book review on this book. I really, really had a nice time talking about it because it's one of my favorites. If you've read it, let me know, leave a comment. And if you've not, and you're, you plan to read it, please let me know. Hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode of any of my book reviews. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.